All right. Good evening, everyone, and we are live on the episode three of AMA with DNK. Can you hear the music? If yes, then let's enjoy the music. Meanwhile, let everybody else join. So I'll take a quick thirty seconds. Enjoy the song. Meanwhile, everybody joins in. So all those who are joining me right now, let's enjoy this song by Coldplay. Meanwhile, let people join in. Let's wait for audience to build up, and then we can get started. So today's topic is about innovation in startups and uh, new age business models, and I'm sure it's going to be really exciting talking about all these things with you guys. Enjoy the music, guys. Meanwhile, let the audience build up. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Thanks for waiting, and let's get started. So, welcome to episode number three of AMA with DNK, and today's topic is innovation in startups and new age business models. This is what we're going to talk about today, and I am personally very excited because today we're going to decode a lot of different business models by. Uh, and also, we are going to talk about a lot of case studies by big companies like Apple, Samsung, Pizza Hut, uh, Facebook, maybe Amazon, uh, Flipkart, likes of those. So it's it's uh, both going to be AMA and a knowledge session. Uh, and as I said, uh, you know this is going to be really fun. So welcome to the Saturday live stream on AMA with DNK. Uh, for all those who have joined in and do not know me, my name is uh, Dil Nawaz Khan. I am the founder of a company called Code Design Labs and another company called Power Deck. I am an entrepreneur with almost ten uh, years, almost like a decade long experience across design, tech, tech, and startup incubation industry. And previously, I have worked with startup with CI and United Seed Venture, United Ventures, which is which was United Seed Fund back in those days. And uh, today, all of us are going to talk about innovation in startups and new age business models. I am watching all your comments as well. If you have any questions about uh, uh, this topic, please uh, pose them in the chat. And also, I am receiving a few questions. I've already started receiving questions on my Instagram account. So if you follow me on Instagram, uh, perfect. You can post your questions there. And if you do not, Follow me on Instagram. Go and follow me on Instagram. But after the episode, okay. So let me give you a quick brief build up of what this session is going to be all about. So we all know and understand that when you're building a startup and when you're building a company, uh, business model and innovation, or rather innovation which leads to dis disruption, are very very critical cr critical components when it comes to uh, creating a niche in the market and offering something to a customer which customer would want and rather than and leave leave the competitor's product and move on to your product right so uh, today i'm going to talk about different kind of uh, we'll we'll first try to decode what is innovation uh, what is the length and the, and the breadth of innovation that goes into a startup into building a startup what is a business what is a business model and most importantly what are new age business models that you as a startup as an early stage entrepreneur as an entrepreneur can incorporate or even if you're not an early stage entrepreneur if you're a seasoned entrepreneur how can you incorporate these business models into your existing startup uh, one of the most important reasons 
uh, why we need to look at business models and evaluate and reevaluate them again and again is because times are moving uh, you know very very fast and things are changing rapidly uh, so just imagine all these startups all the businesses who are sticking to a, a very cliched brick and mortar business models all of them literally fail the moment covid came so times are changing really really fast and therefore it's very very important for all of us to keep on uh, re reinventing our business models so that they're they're we are able to be relevant at that point in time right so this is the reason why we're going to talk about all of these things as i said if you have any questions post them into the comment section and i have a look also uh, now when we're talking about innovation in startups and we're talking about new age business models uh, we also need to understand what is a startup what is the difference between startups and businesses uh, and all these points right so i have covered all these uh, uh, the the answer to all these very ba basic questions that what is a startup what is a difference between a startup and a business uh, you know all these kind of things i've covered them in them in episode number 1 right uh, so if you haven't watched the episode number one of AMA with DNK, go and watch uh, uh, that episode after this session, of course, because that is where I have spoken about all these very fundamental basic questions. Uh, also, as I said, if you are doing a conventional business, if and if you if you are into something which is again brick and mortar, uh, you may you in the in the existing scenario you might be doing very little innovation or you might be having a minimal innovation. Uh, but as I said, it's uh, the times are changing really fast, and therefore you need to uh, reinvent the wheel. You need to reevaluate your innovation model, business model, and therefore you need to understand and learn that how can you do that into existing business model, right? So that is what we're going to cover in today's session perfect so when it comes to a startup right uh, why do we need to understand in innovation right why is everybody talking about innovation and and why do we need innovation and and rather disruption because see the very basic fundamental of startups or rather one of the definitions of very of, of startup says that it is a highly innovative enterprise and because innovation does not have a very mathematical definition therefore this makes this entire topic a very very strong debatable subject what do i mean by that people still debate that is google innovative enough right is amazon or flipkart innovative enough or innovative is apple innovative the reason i'm picking up all these three is that google was not the first search engine still it occupies 96 percent of the market share in search engine business which is technically a free product right when it comes to amazon and flipkart doing a delivery is not rocket science and even you and i or anybody in the world in the, in anybody in the planet can build this business therefore uh, delivery is not innovation or uh, what is the extent of innovation that Flipkart was eventually sold to Walmart at 18 billion dollars uh, is Apple innovative a lot of people who are not fan of Apple right I'm not and I'm not going to get into, into technicalities a lot of people not fan of Apple see that hey Apple is running a lot behind Samsung or Android and uh, 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 you know now the kind of features and modules and the kind of uh, things they're bringing into the Apple ecosystem or even in iOS or other Mac uh, 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 software right they have been done long before so is apple innovative that's a question so we're going to deconstruct all of these points and look at where what makes all these startups innovative or are, is there actually some innovation or is innovation a fluke we'll also talk about that also on the other side right uh when the when it comes to innovation is only b2b innovative is only enterprise business model innovative is only high-tech business innovative so is there no scope for innovation in a b2c segment or is the innovation model around b2c segment dead or is the business model which is built around healthcare or biotech or high end high end science and engineering startups and, and, and businesses is innovation can only happen there or do you have to be a ai ml blockchain iot deep tech startup to be innovative Right? So there are so many questions. This particular uh, ecosystem is blurred, uh, has, 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 has a lot of gray area, and that is what we're going to decode in today's session today. Uh, so before uh, jumping and getting into the deep dive, let me remove these distractions like always, and let's get started. So first of all, uh, I want to talk about a very important point here. Uh, 
which is that a lot of times people come and ask that do we have to be uh, the first player into the market if we have to be the market leader right and we have already spoken about it like a couple of seconds back the tipcart was not the first search first e-commerce player or a marketplace player when it comes to Uh, uh, selling products, or rather, Amazon was was not the first first one, right? Uh, maybe uh, Google was not the first search search engine. So a very first question that comes in front of all of us that when you think of as innovation, how important is it to be the first in the market, right? And how important is it to have a very unique idea? So let's talk about that. So I have a I have a theory or a philosophy there that. And and rather, I, I I dissect this entire narrative in a, narrative into three parts. Uh, there are only three case studies, or there are only three ways, or there are only three things that can happen, or there are three only three cases that can happen when you are building a company, right? One, you're working on an idea that nobody has thought about, or you're working on such a unique idea that which hasn't come in anybody's mind, right? Uh, Although idea or a solution is a derivative of problem, and problems are public, it is there's a ninety nine percent chance that it is not practically possible uh, until unless you're not building or working on something which has never been done before. Ninety nine ninety nine percent chance you are wrong. You are maybe living under a rock, uh, and it is not practically possible that anything that you're working on uh, has not been ever done before. It's not possible. So second. why is this particular thing that you're working on is not there in the market or you see a market gap one reason that can happen is because a lot of people have tried this in the past and have failed right a lot of companies try doing that and therefore we also need to learn and understand why a startup fail but there there are couple of obvious reasons like it can be a team it can be funding it can be technology available at that time it can be maybe the ecosystem that supported the entire idea it can be economy and most importantly as i said it can be timing of launching of the product uh, in in my last episode when i when i spoke about uh, tiktok why tiktok became one of the biggest uh, you know uh, players of Of our times in terms of uh, digital content creation, or why was it able to kind of have maximum number of users in India, is because of the ripe environment of uh, availability of the internet, which happened because of the geo blast, and most importantly of availability of cheap and high end smartphones. Right. So the point I'm trying to establish here is that a startup. if a uh, idea is not available in the market if the if the, if the company uh, which is which uh, around which you are trying to build your idea is not there in the market or you see zero competition i think there is a bigger chance there is a higher chance that uh, a lot of people have tried and failed that and any any of the reasons that i have stated like team funding technology ecosystem economic timing could have not supported uh, making that company becoming a vertical leader another reason why a company trying to build does not exist in the market is because there are many people trying to do a similar business but nobody has become a market leader yet this is one very critical thing you need to understand right because a lot of guys who come to me who reach out to me and and i and i said i've spoken on multiple platforms and interact with thousand of entrepreneurs till now uh, this is one very common obvious thing that i get that i that i get asked is that hey my idea is so innovative nobody else is doing it or nobody else has done, done it before and one of the main reasons why it is not uh, uh, existing is because there's so many players in the market executing building the same idea in silos but nobody has still become a market leader so if i let us say talk about market market leader in food delivery it's swiggy and zomato market leader in e-commerce amazon flipkart market leader in maybe uh, uh, hospital uh, hospital discovery it's practo or delivery netmed and companies like this but if we talk about spaces like grocery business right there there are of course a few startups now post funding growers and likes of big basket but then every uh, community every small city has a local grocery delivery delivery business of its own similarly uh, if if i look at a company like a laundry business if i look at a company like which is into hyper local or if i look at a company like which is into renting business renting of products renting of clothes renting of anything else nobody is yet the market leader and the reason why they haven't become the market leader is there's too much there's low entry barrier into that particular space the space is therefore heavily overcrowded and the high logistics cost makes it a unscalable business right summarizing it there are three reasons why your idea 
does not exist in the market one nobody has has thought of it before it's a rarity cannot happen second a lot of people have tried and have failed third a lot of people are trying to do it right now but nobody has become a market leader and these are a few reasons these are three reasons why what you're trying to do is not existing and therefore innovation becomes a critical uh, a game changer rather which leads to disruption again all these are jargons but we need to understand how innovation then plays a very critical and important role in driving this entire ecosystem and making you enabling you a market leader or a market uh, uh, player biggest player in the market right so moving ahead therefore let us now understand and look at definition of innovation of course as i said innovation is a debatable topic innovation is a topic which uh, uh, uh has a lot of gray area but let us look at what internet has to say let us look at what uh, wikipedia has to say let us look at what a few the other credible platforms have to say so a lot of credible platform let us say wikipedia defines innovation as innovation is a new idea a creative thought a new imagination in the form of device or a method uh, application of better solution that meets new requirements unarticulated needs or existing market needs so basically a lot of times you'll see innovation uh being defined as a more of an implementer than a game changer or then a executor right so it is how you implement then that uh, is what defines innovation and not how you create right let me I, and i know it might get a little complicated here because uh, as i said if you are somebody who is starting a company right now innovations is a tricky topic to understand but if you are uh, not able to understand how innovation works and how can you incorporate this innovative strategy into ultimately your business model it will be difficult to survive in the market and therefore it is important to understand how innovation functions right so i'll repeat the definition so the wikipedia says innovation is a new idea a creative thought a new imagination in form of a device or a method or rather service innovation is basically application of better solution that meet new requirements unarticulated needs or existing market needs such innovation takes place through the provision or more effective products processes service technology or business summarizing it in one line innovation is not invention right i'll quickly take a 10 second pause and i'll try to explain innovation is not invention so therefore a lot of people who think that a high tech deep tech company if you say iot if you say uh, blockchain if you say ai if you say ml if you say biotech if you say nanotech if you're using a jargon or a fancy word in your pitch or in your business model or while talking to customers and you think that that makes you innovative startup no you're not so innovation is not invention innovation is something else and that is what i'll again try and decode in this entire session going further going forward right so so you know Im so improving the practical implementation of new innovation to make meaningful sense in the market or society and not requiring a modern invention is what is innovation so basically innovation is process of translating an idea or an invention into goods or service that creates value for what a customer is willing to pay right let me give you a very basic and simple example uh let us talk about a few case studies so that we are able to understand right we have spoken about flipkart already so let's take an example of flipkart a lot of you and you might have heard this in lot of other uh, startup sessions and webinars and seminars and talk shows that and, and it's a debatable talk, topic that flipkart is not the most innovative company or flipkart is not an innovative company rather it's a redundant idea it's a copy of amazon but the biggest innovation that flipkart was able to do uh, in the country or in the, in the in the indian ecosystem was that flipkart implemented something called as cashier delivery right so flipkart when they started back in 2009 or 2010 or rather 8 whatever that time period was uh, digital payments was not still on the rise or rather internet was not on the rise now all of you and i use internet we have smartphones there is easy access of internet available right but people were still skeptical in paying online and digital payments was not a big deal uh, uh, remember paytm was kicking off back then right uh, your free charge was kicking off back then digital payment was not people were usually talking on a everyday basis so therefore 
Flipkart did one very basic small change in the entire model, which is differentiator than in Amazon, is that they basically invent they basically implemented something called as cash and delivery. And because of cash and delivery, they were able to incorporate a very important critical component, which is trust of the customer. And that is what led Flipkart becoming Flipkart today. Right? So it was not an invention. It was not some out of the world idea. But this one thing, which is COD, became a game changer for Flipkart. Right? Let us also look at the example of Swiggy, right? A lot of people, and the re- this is the reason why I'm trying to give you, I'm, I'm giving you so many examples because so that you understand how innovation functions, right? Let us look at example of Swiggy, right? A lot of people tried food delivery and rather failed into the food delivery space. Uh, uh, food partner tried, they failed miserably. Uh, in fact, Tiny Owl, which was a which was a, Tiny Owl, which was almost like a, a million dollar company, which which raised almost like a series B or C D C. And if I'm, I I need to check the fact, but I think they were almost like a million dollar company. They failed miserably in food delivery, and I think the three very important critical reasons why Swiggy became the number one player or why Swiggy became successful. And let us look at the innovation Swiggy was able to do in the entire business model. The Swiggy became the number one player in this market. And of course, I'm not uh, picking up Zomato right now because Zomato was already existing in the market. The business model of Zomato was something else. I'll, I'll, I'll decode that once we start talking about the business models. But Zomato has, has, has a different business model altogether. They were mainly into discovery and listing services and they were making money uh, not just on the commissions but also on the selling of software. So I'll not talk about that. So therefore, I'm taking a case study of Sugi here to help you understand the innovations Sugi was able to do. So. Number one, a lot of people say that it is the discount that became a game changer for Swiggy. No, it is discount, of course, helped and aided uh, uh, and enabled them to acquire more customers. But it, the number one factor that when you get into food delivery space or food space is that you care for fresh and hot food. This, these are the two important critical points uh, that while you're ordering food, you, you want your food to be hot, delivered hot and delivered fresh. And therefore, Swiggy enabled the hyper local delivery only model. If you look at Food Panda and if you look at other businesses that were earlier trying to build their business model or were trying to get into the food delivery space, they were enabling delivery from one corner of the city to another corner of, of, of the city. And there's a very serious problem with this entire model right one of course your food will not be fresh if the traffic is there it it, it, it will get cold or, or it will not be that fresh the moment it's out of uh, the pot right so uh, the food is not fresh the food is not hot but most importantly this delivery time and this delivery cost is not a great model because it will then eventually reflect in your uh, financial sheets and it's a bad variable cost or a huge operating cost and therefore you will never be never be able to make money so the moment swiggy was able to create that and create and convert this entire model into hyper local they could introduce something like hub and spoke and therefore they were able to make more deliveries per geographical area and therefore one guy can deliver more orders because the entire geography of the delivery gets restricted so which is like a three three kilometer or five kilometer area which is which is decent enough so uh, so hyper local delivery made swiggy what it is today number one number two they also introduced a concept called cloud kitchens and why cloud kitchen became a game changer in the entire uh, success of swiggy narrative is because let us analyze what is a restaurant business so restaurant typically if you look at any fine dining restaurant or restaurant restaurant is not in a business of food they are in a business of uh, uh, lifestyle or if i may use the right word they are in the in the in the business of providing you great experience they are an experience business right so imagine if you uh, tell your restaurant guy to focus on delivery rather than focusing on the experience business, he's going to lose a lot of business from the existing clients. 
you don't go to a restaurant to just eat food you want to kind of take a break you want to go out and chill there with your friends you want to kind of have a have a day out or a night out and you want to kind of have change change the entire atmosphere or or, or kind of change the entire uh, uh, you know surrounding and that is why you go to a fancy restaurant for a fancy dinner or a, or a lunch right so if you push the restaurant guy to focus on deliveries the problem is going to be that his focus will shift and therefore he might not be able to do a justice to both of them so what swiggy did they introduced something called as cloud kitchens where, where, where there was no uh, hospitality or experience business happening they were purely food making machines right and then they said hey don't worry about the delivery we will do the delivery and that what made swiggy what swiggy is today so hyper local market uh, hyper local delivery number 1 which reduced the cost significantly and increased the volume of delivery significantly number 2 introduction of cloud kitchens so the only job is to make or rather uh make food then rather than providing experience and third they said we'll do the delivery so they took the owners of the delivery which was not on the uh or which was not now on the restaurant guy right so these are the three reasons or rather these three innovations into the entire business model of swiggy that led swiggy that led to the uh the creation of uh or, or, or rather that that led to making swiggy a, a billion dollar company or a unicorn in in, in that sense right so now we have kind of spoken about these two particular examples also also let me add an international example here right let let me talk about apple so when we talk about innovation in terms of what apple does uh, and i'm and i'm not sure how many of you saw the latest wwdc by apple and where they where, where they talk about introduction of new chips and new processors and this and that which is more on the invention side if you even look at in general the uh the innovation ecosystem that an apple provides right they they provides uh, innovation in terms of aesthetics they provides innovation in terms of experience they provide innovation in terms of uh, experience in the product in checking in checking out in in the in the apple store so i think at every step the way things are done uh, adds to the entire value chain of the innovation and that is what makes or breaks a startup into the innovation game right so i think uh, so therefore as i said one innovation is not invention that is something you you all need to understand and second innovation has not only to be tech if i have to kind of give you uh, the pointers you can you as a startup can think about innovation in technology which is obvious you can think about innovation in business model and if i go by the principles of design thinking you can go about innovate emotional innovation functional innovation and experience experiential innovation so there are multiple types of innovation you can do in your business let me give you a 10 second pause and let 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 me uh, give you time for this to sink in right because if you are somebody or if you if you're watching this episode later on rip, repeat right uh, you need to firmly understand that if you are uh not innovating enough in terms of a business model and if you're not able to provide the value to the customer right he will go back go to the go to the competitor and you might not be able to retain them right okay so as i said uh innovation is not invention i have spoke i've told you about multiple types of innovation which exist i have also also told about uh, a few case studies i've spoken about uh, about swiggy about flipkart about apple so therefore how can you and i and as i said how can you and i as entrepreneurs as aspiring entrepreneurs as somebody who's enthusiastic about sardi ecosystem incorporate these innovative business models into our uh, general routine business how can we do that how can you and i do that and and as i said if you have any questions guys about all of these things that are that i've always spoken about uh, feel free to comment them into the chat and as i said i have already received a few questions which i'll which i'll pick up at the end of the session uh, so uh, i'll be looking forward for questions from your side so all those who are watching if you if any questions if you have any doubts about whatever i speak i have spoken till now please post them into the comment section i'll pick them at the end of the session right okay so now before we jump into understanding innovation in business model or how can you incorporate all of these innovations into your business model let us look at the definition of business 
So a business is typically a, a practice or an activity done by an organization or an enterprise, typically which is done into a commercial setting or industri industrial setting or a professional uh, setting or a professional activity, right? So business can be profit or non-profit, but ultimately or or maybe done through do a do a charitable activity or to or for a social cause, which makes uh, uh, you know something like a social uh, uh, social uh, uh, for-profit social business model, which we will not speak uh, today. We'll 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 cover that in some another session, uh, and I have a video for that. I'll, I'll I'll rather host it so that you can watch what is a so for-profit social uh, enterprise. But typically, in general, for any business generating profit or profit for the value they deliver right becomes uh, or is the ultimate biggest goal so uh, it is basically an organized effort and activity of individuals or a company or a, or an organization to produce and sell goods and services of profit so you can either be into uh, a business of selling goods or services right you can or basically or basically you might be transacting anything and ultimately this transaction has to generate some sort of a value and people pay you pay, pay you for the value so you deliver some sort of value and you take money in return right and the bigger the value is the higher the money is and then it is and, and the moment when i say value value is, is not only the product and that is what we'll talk about when we when we try and decode the business models so ultimately a lot of times people uh, think and say and feel that hey i'm selling x thing but ultimately you don't you never sell a product you sell a value if your product is giving you more giving the customer more value he will be willing to pay more it's a very important thing you need to understand let us say if uh, you are selling water to somebody around a beach or around a place where the water is in abundance, he might not be willing to pay you one rupee for a glass. But if you're selling somebody walking water, walking in a scorching heat in, in like a month of May or June, he might be willing to pay 100 rupees. So the, so, so the worth of water is same, but it is the worth of value that he's willing to pay for. Right? So therefore, if you let us say, look at uh, the car market, right? Uh, every car has a steering wheel and four tires and an engine, but a BMW sells for like a 25 lakh or a 30 lakh, but a Maruti sells for five lakhs for that matter, right? So you never, you are of course paying for the for the product, the service, but you also pay for the value, and I'll, I'll help you decode values as well. Ultimately, you pay for the value that you receive. And if you're if you're not able to, uh, uh, if you're not if you do not feel that the value is enough, you will not pay, right? And, and both the companies are, are, are almost like a billion dollar company. The company that make BMW is also a million dollar company and Maruti, Maruti is also a million dollar company, right? So ultimately everybody, uh, if you're able to provide right value to, to the right customer, you, be, you become a market leader, right? Okay. So therefore, what we have understood by now is we have technically understood and decoded the definition of a business, right? So now the way you implement this uh, uh, model, and the way you are able to create value for the customer is the business model. So if I tell you the definition of a business model, a business model describes how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. All of you are who are watching me right now are listening to this word again and again for the value. And therefore, I cannot emphasize it enough how critical the word value is, is, this in, is, 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 the in, is in this entire sorry narrative or the game. If you do not understand the concept of value, and I'm not talking about money, value that you deliver, right? You will not be able to create a sustainable or other profitable business. And for every entrepreneur, profit is the ultimate objective, right? And I don't see generating profit as a negative thing because if you get profit, you can do a lot for the society. You can do a lot for your own, own company. You can do a lot for your own employees. So therefore, generating profit is a very critical key component when it comes to doing a business, right? Okay, so business model refers to a company's plan of making profit, a very simple definition, or it a, a business model is basically, uh, it helps you to identify the product or, or the survey that business business plans to sell to the identified or the targeted market with a with a anticipated expenses. So business model is important for both new and established businesses, and I've already spoken about this, and I cannot emphasize it enough. If you are a new business, if you're an old business, if you are a business which is uh, which is which is from 20, 30, 40, 50 years, or if you are an aspiring entrepreneur thinking of getting into a business, understanding business model, understanding value creation, understanding innovation is important 
And I cannot emphasize it enough that COVID has shown us how important is it to change and relook at all of these things. Because if you do not analyze your business again and again, if you do not relook at what you are doing, if you do, if you do not relook at your entire model, you are bound to fail because the world is moving really fast. And it is not just your competitor who is coming to crush you, but the entire economy and the ecosystem is also going to crush you if you're not inventing enough or if you're not innovating enough. Right? So, therefore, as I said, the bottom line is, the bottom line is you need to understand the concept of value in order to create wealth out of it or money out of it. Okay. So now let's talk about business models. How can you create value for your customers? And what are the types of business models which are there? And then, of course, we'll pick up a few questions. I hope you are able to understand what I'm trying to tell you up till now, because this entire thing will help you in help you in incorporating all of these fundamentals into your own startup, right? So also another thing which I want to mention here, if you are an early stage entrepreneur, or if you are somebody who is getting into a new age business model and i explain new age business models later in the session uh, and you're not getting into any brick and mortar kind of a business right something some business which is very conventional something like a restaurant business or a or a, or a consulting business or a uh, accounting business something which is not done very very conventionally you uh, you definitely need to understand that the business model development and rather product development is not a one-time process. It's not a linear process. And therefore, whether you talk about a Flipkart or whether you talk about Amazon or whether you talk about a Google, all of them are relooking and reinventing their business models every day. And that's the reason why they're launching uh, not just new products, but new companies or acquiring new companies every 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 uh, quarter or rather every year and that's pretty evident we are, we are watching we are looking at all, all of these things look at the way reliance geo has created the business model look at the way facebook has uh, reinvented the entire model look at the way google has reinvented the in, entire, the entire model and look at look at the way apple has reinvented the entire model so so we'll we'll talk a lot more about all these things uh, uh, moving ahead so therefore uh, there are only two kinds of business models in general that we can look at one model is basically that you play a volume game so you make more money you make so you make more products and sell them at a lower margin right or you play a margin game you make less products and you and you and, and you and you sell them at a very premium high price making more margin for you what do we mean by that we mean we mean that that either you are catering to the bottom of the pyramid which I again have said as an example, either you're making a Maruti, which you're trying to sell at a 5 lakh rupee and selling it to like uh, 10 lakh people or 10 lakh Marutis in a year, or you're making a BMW, which is like a 25 lakh rupee and if you're, you're, you're selling at say 500 in a year or maybe 1 lakh a year. I don't know what the right number would be in terms of the economics. Or uh, let us also look at an example of Apple, Apple and Samsung, right? Or Apple and Android. Either you make a phone so premium that only a few people, if you look at the market share of Apple iPhone, it is almost 10% or somewhere around that. But if you look at the Android, 60% of the market share is already owned by Android. So either you make an Android and you sell it at a cheaper price so that the bottom of the pyramid can be cater, catered, or you create an Apple, which is the top of the pyramid and only 10% or 5% of the top layer is able to buy that product. None of the products of Apple are sold less than 50,000 rupees. And I'm not talking about the three or a four gen old four four uh, year old generation phone. I'm talking about the latest phone. They've now come to a level where they're selling it, selling a phone at almost like a 1.5 lakh rupee. That and that's crazy. Uh, but if you can Android, Android typically starts from like a three or a four thousand and then goes up to fifty thousand rupees. I, I I don't I I can't even remember uh, an Android phone getting sold at like a lakh rupee. And even even if you're, if you if you're, if you're from a uh, from a non-premium brand, uh, you know, you like a like a like a Oppo or a Vivo or a Realme, you'll not try to go beyond 25, 30, 40, 40,000 rupees uh, when it comes to creating a phone, right? So let us decode this here. So number one, let us look at what Apple is trying to sell 
and let's look at what samsung is trying to sell apple defines itself not just as a product company but it's a lifestyle company so apple when they're trying to sell you an iphone apple is not selling a phone apple is selling you a status symbol so if you carry an apple phone and of course the latest one or the latest model people perceive you to be a rich guy nobody cares whether it's an emi people perceive you to be a rich guy so apple is helping you to upgrade your public image they try and trying, trying to sell your social status and therefore the 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 way apple has positioned its entire business model is not they're not selling you a phone the so phone is a product but they're selling you a status symbol or a social status or a lifestyle product wherein samsung defines itself as a consumer electronic company they're, they're not selling a lifestyle they're selling you a product that can you use it's an electronic product company that, that you can use in an everyday scenario right and and these are the definition the company says for themselves the reason i'm telling you this is because uh, you never sell a product a lot of times people get confused that when they are when when they look at the entire business model you always begin from of course a pain point and then you look at the customer and then you create a product out of it but you never ever ever sell a product and a service and i cannot emphasize it enough product and service is what you sell or or what is the solution but you sell a value proposition and it is subjective you always sell a value and if your value is relative as per the scenario and if you're able to target the right customer you might be able to sell at a much higher monetary value because the exchange of the value is higher there so apple as i said so so, 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 so same example you can find almost similar features in a in a honda car at a price point of 15 20 lakh rupees which you will find in a mercedes at 50 lakh rupees right but a 50 lakh mercedes is a social status or social symbol and a honda is is a, is a, is a consumer car or is a general car everybody owns right so this is how you create a business model and 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 then you 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 talk in terms of a, of a pyramid uh, and how you position it right now you there also lot of times there also auxiliary business models which you need to understand right so for example if uh, apple has sold you an iphone right if, if they sold you an iphone they have made money once or rather they have made little money in terms of the margin or 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 rather the product margin must be high but then they're spending a lot of money in terms of innovation in terms of inventing in terms of their apple store and things like that so the overall books uh, uh show that there is a less profit or less margin but therefore then they move on to something called as a recurring model so every time you buy an iphone you also subscribe to an icloud and imusic and that gives them a recurring business model right so what happens in all these cases you start working on auxiliary service and, and you and you try and get into a space of an ecosystem so when you buy this phone you are there are multiple there seven eight ten models around this particular phone you buy a phone so there's one transaction that has happened you have bought a product one value exchange you give them certain margin when they buy a product second when you buy this product you of course buy some sort of a cover right or some sort of accessory and when you buy a cover and accessory that is another business model so somebody else if apple is not making it original somebody else is making it and therefore that's the second kind of business model third you break the phone you uh, so it is insurance which happens in the phone if it breaks you go to service center another business model replacement of part another business model right then what happens then another thing that happens is people who are building products for apple ecosystem or or maybe for that matter any ecosystem whether android or apple right so you have a marketplace where people host their applications and you get the application you download it and, and put it in, into your into your phone so there's another business model that runs there so apple charge almost 30% commission on every app they they sell and there's a recurring model there right then apps have a business model it is a paid app or a free app with a in house marketplace where you can buy products something like what a pubg or any other uh, company would do where you have in 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 game coins and you can buy certain themes and skins and things like that uh, product skins there then you have ad model and then you have a premium model you pay for the app and use it so the multiple new age business models that run around the ecosystem that you as an entrepreneur can think about it and and if today if you belong to a brick and mortar business and if your if your business does not have minimum of 
three to four business models and rather technically all of them giving you certain sort of business money stream you are doomed to fail so it is very very critical to evaluate and understand new age business models right so we so i've, I've so i've kind of given you the example of apple so of course you buy a phone you subscribe to multiple services then you buy apps then you buy things on it things like that right uh of course then you upgrade i upgrade to icloud and there's multiple uh, things like that i've already spoken about the kind of accessories it gives and the kind of you know repair repair things and everything uh similarly if you if you look at let us say amazon example right so amazon started with one uh, thing which is the amazon marketplace you go on to amazon buy a product they of course make certain commission then amazon introduce something called as kindle so kindle is an amazon product it's a hardware product you buy it for once and then you keep on subscribing uh the ebooks on kindle store and they it gives them a recurring revenue right so ultimately everybody if you look at the ecosystem is either getting into one time uh, money service or a recurring money service or a recurring business model so either there is a one time business model or a recurring business model and therefore ultimately there are only uh from a broader point of view two types of business model one is a recurring business model and one is a one time business model and then of course i'll i'll talk a lot more uh, uh, I'll, i'll give you more more insights uh, into this particular thing so uh, as i said why do you ultimately you need to understand the entire business model narrative because they help you in uh, you know raising investment making a company new age modern age uh, most importantly they help you to you know uh, recruit new people you start looking like a new company and you get multiple streams of money coming into your way so that you are able to mitigate the overall economy risk or you able to mitigate the overall uh, ecosystem risk which is which which is there because of the kind of conditions we are living in today and then of course most importantly you are also able to analyze the trends and the challenges happening in the future and things like that okay so let me give you another very interesting example of uh, of a product that all of us have consumed and eaten and uh, all of us see almost in our everyday life and that will also kind of help you in understanding how a business model functions so i'm sure all of you would have gone to a pizza hut or a dominos right a lot of times people say that they are a same business and i'm not talking about the legal entity here pizza hut and dominos are not the same business they are rather a different business model the product that pizza hut and dominos is selling is same both of them are selling a pizza but the business model for both of them is not the same they work or function on a different business model let me explain how let's pick up two case studies one let us look at the in house experience that you get when you go to a dominos when you go to a dominos the in house experience is that typically they don't serve you in cutlery it's a it's a more like a very open ended place right uh, they will take your money first and then punch an order right and they typically serve in a box that they give you and you can sit and eat right wherein if you look at the experience of a pizza hut the entire experience of pizza hut is that it's a very nice restaurant where you walk in you sit there's a waiter to serve you the people asking you whether what you like what you don't like you eat in a cutlery and then you get the bill after you eat it basically dominos is a logistics business when pizza hut is a hospitality business pizza hut is trying to sell you hospitality the product is pizza right but the business model is hospitality the in the domain in dominos the, uh, the the product is pizza but they are a logistics business of course a lot of you might argue that hey both of them deliver but domino but pizza had entered into this race much later on right uh, initially dominos was, was the one who started the delivery business and the 30 sec 30 minute delivery challenge and those other kind of thing so technically if i have to de define domino it's a it's a it's a best food logistics company on the planet or food logic company or in india rather if i if it's a indian company right so we have to also understand how both of these companies work also let us look at the experience in terms of tv right if you if you look at the ad of pizza hut you will in general find a fine dining restaurant where a couple is sitting or a or a young couple with a with a, with a kid is sitting in a very nice cozy dim light dinner environment wherein if you look at the ad of a dominos you will see that uh young guys and young girls and uh, maybe maybe people watching a football match or a cricket match are chilling around and then they have ordered and somebody comes and delivers the pizza 
right so experience is 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 far different and therefore they're selling a different product that's a, they're selling the same product but the business model for both of these business both, both of these entities is technically very very different so therefore understanding the core business model business functionality becomes very critical and as i said you are not selling a product my friend ultimately you're selling a selling a value which has to translate into the wealth of the money category right so now summarizing everything together for from today's session and then of course i'll move on to picking up a few questions summarizing everything together ultimately there are in general there were two kinds of business and then of course the modern age brought in the third one it was either b2b you were a business selling to another business it was b2c you were a business selling to consumer and now because of the internet and the marketplace economy and the open economy there's something called a c2c a consumer can sell to a consumer right typically how a rental website or a marketplace would function therefore if you look at older businesses the older businesses were manufacturing businesses distributor businesses retail businesses which is typically into a common value chain and they were more like brick and mortar businesses then you have businesses which were dealing into franchise license and technology transfer these were other old kind of business models then you have uh, had businesses like advertising space listing spaces uh, yellow books those kind of businesses right what are the new age businesses so therefore the new age businesses are one either a commission commission business model where nobody makes anything but people make people people makes money people make money right so you you either work on affiliate model or you work on a drop ship, shipping model these are new age businesses drop shipping affiliate you give a link of x product and you start making commission and every sell you give to the company right then you have something called the platform matchmaker and marketplace all of these business models were not existing before and this could only happen because in, in because of the internet you know so all the platforms all the matchmakers of the marketplace are, are on internet so, ma the, so so the marketplace is amazon and flipkart and and and, and the matchmaker of the discovery uh, service is like a zomato or a swiggy and then you have platform where you can go and buy products so all of these are again on the internet and are are a great business model to pursue then you have aggregator so you have a place where everybody you brings in everybody together and the consumer goes and choose what they want almost like a platform but aggregator is a, is a collection of more service providers that are, that are willing to give services to a consumer ultimately right then you have a freemium business model right where you give certain services for free and then after a point in time in terms of consumption you start billing them right or you give x x features for free and then 10 more features which are paid so freemium service business model you have on demand business model which is typically your ola and uber right on demand and then you have saas pass and subscription business model so you have service software as a service infra as a service a uh, platform as a service and almost like a subscription business model something like a netflix or a uh, or any other any other uh, any other platform like that where you subscribe what these business models have done good to us is that they have significantly reduced the ultimate product cost for the consumer therefore from the top premium category they have they have moved down slowly to the bottom of, of the pyramid where more people can use these products and therefore the capital investment also has gone down right so if you let us say are into affiliate business if you are into drop shipping business as a, i'm i'm not i'm although i'm not an expert of drop shipping shipping and affiliate but if you are into those business you need technically need zero inventory right wherein on a platform again the entry barrier is really very low you can start your platform tomorrow and you can you can get started on the business by getting in right Uh, you know service provider and right uh, right uh, consumers who want to buy the the platform and then you start making commission and every transaction that you, that, that you deliver so these are a few new age business models other that you can look into and pursue and repeat so older business models were manufacturing distribution retail brick and mortar franchise line sizing advertising and new age business model is commission affiliate drop shipping platform matchmaker marketplaces aggregator premium on demand saas as pass and subscription uh the, the 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 important point to note here is that of course if you google you will find hundreds of types of business model uh, model and there are enough material available on the internet when it comes to business model there are there are blog which say that there are 20 types of business model there the, the, the blogs that that say that there are 50 types of business model the blogs that say there are 100 types of business models don't get confused 
ultimately a business model uh, in a nutshell is how you create wealth for your customer and translate that uh, sorry how you create value for your customer and how you translate that value in form of money or in form of wealth that is a business model and that is what you need to understand and figure out right now the last point that i want to talk about before i pick up questions so once you are able to establish or figure out or understand these basic business models and you want to incorporate more my only tip or advice to people watching or who who, who are going to watch this what this later is that never ever create a business model which is not in connection or in relation to your existing business right you can do something called as a vertical integration or a forward integration or a backward integration not going to get into jargons but all of all your all of your businesses should somehow correlate or should help you either expand horizontally or vertically what do what do i mean by expansion horizontally or expansion vertically if you are let us say education institute you are giving offline coaching classes right and the moment you start giving online coaching classes you get into something called as a deep dive or a vertical integration you have created another another subset of your service on the internet this is called as a vertical integration or going much more deeper right or let us say you were a company you were a a, a coaching institute uh, giving coaching for iit and now you start for medical it's a horizontal expansion or you are giving coaching for let us say college students and now you start for school students it's again horizontal so if you look at let us let us say google just to give you a very very simple and fine example if you look at google google is a very fine example of horizontal market player google knows everything even if you ask the recipe of how to make pasta to how to uh, detect tooth cavity google will be able to give you any and every possible answer google is horizontal in nature right but if you have to find something very very specific maybe a restaurant you go to zomato if you want a doctor you go to practo if you find have to find go and uh, check out a movie show you go to book my show right and then all of these websites individually give you access to the entire ecosystem deep dive so any everything around food is on zomato and how zomato took get, went more deeper is earlier they were only discovery now they are also into delivery right uh how a book my show uh, went more deeper they were earlier only booking movies and now they're listing events and booking events and doing online shows as well post covid right so you have to kind of create this entire framework if you have to create a great business model so that you are able you are able to create a full true business which is uh, which is which is which is which are surviving in the long run not long time uh it's a very important insight guys uh if you are not able to understand this go back and watch this and read a lot about this on the internet this is a game changer this is what will make you survive for coming years we already saw that restaurants who were into delivery business survived covid somehow and the rest and the restaurant which were not in delivery did not survive covid I I have a session happening tomorrow where I'm going to talk about startups and how uh, what are what industry uh, became boosted in COVID and remote was one of them right we as a company uh, you know my company is called Code and Labs we are a, a remote company from past four years and we literally doubled our business in COVID times and we were able to do far more uh, pet projects in COVID times just because we knew how to uh, how to do remote work. right wherein a lot of businesses that were not into remote had a tough time surviving covid and lot of businesses who were having huge operating cost onto them or were spending lot of money or in terms of their employer employees and were just having people for in form of undisguised employment i think they literally crashed so building a lean business model building a business model which is which is new age Build, uh, optimizing your uh, finances in terms of your overheads and your variable costs and all these things and of course we'll have another ama uh, another live session where i talk about financial model in a much more detailed uh, manner uh, 
I think it's very very important, and it's 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 a, it's a need of the hour. You need to evaluate all of these data points. Concluding my session before I uh, jump onto questions. So therefore, how can you get started? All those who are watching this, how can you get started? And let me give you three or four very simple basic frameworks that will enable you to kind of get it, get started. One. You can start jumping and working on design thinking and using design thinking frameworks. I personally have done a session on design thinking. I can uh, I can I can put up the link to my design thinking session. Uh, otherwise, you can go on to uh, uh, this website, which is D School of Design, which is Stanford course from where I learned design thinking. I think you should start looking at design thinking model and start incorporating those principles into your business. Right, number one. Number two, start. Working, even if you are an old business, or even if you've been doing business from a long time, start working on or start building something called a lean model canvas and business model canvas. These are two different, separate documents, separate frameworks. They're not the same. Anybody who comes and tell you they're same, no, they're not same. Business model canvas and lean model canvas are two different, separate documents. Lean model canvas is typically for people who are into idea stage or pre-idea. Business model canvas is for people who are already running an existing business and now want to refine their business models. If you are an idea stage entrepreneur, if you're if you're if you're an early stage entrepreneur, refer a lean model canvas. If you're a business, if you're an entrepreneur who's already running a business, please go and refer to business model canvas. Last but not the least, something which a lot of people do not know and do not talk about. You need to look at and create something called a value proposition canvas. Because then only you will be able to understand how can you create enough value for a customer and how can you translate that value into wealth and make money not just for your business but also for your employees and the stakeholders. Okay, so that's it. That is where my kind of formal session ends. That is where I have kind of given you enough information, uh, have given you structured information rather in form of. Uh, what is innovation? What is meaning of innovation? Innovation is not invention. Types of innovative models. I've given you certain case studies around Flipkart, around Swiggy, around Zomato, around Apple, around Pizza and Domino's. And most importantly, then we've spoken about business, business models, and what are the new age business models, and how can you incorporate and create a business model, uh, a new age business model into existing business or existing uh, setup. Yeah. So moving ahead, I will now pick up a few questions that I've received and I'll try and answer them. And I hope this adds a lot more value to your startup journey, to your learning journey. And I really, all those who are watching, I would really request if you like this entire live, I'm sorry, if you like this live, if you like this episode, if you like what I'm trying to do here on every Saturday, go and share this with your friends, with other people from the ecosystem on your social media so that more people are able to take the advantage of these sessions. And all of these sessions are already pre recorded are already recorded and put and, and they're done although they're, they're, they're done in a live setting, but they're already up there on my YouTube channel. Go and subscribe if you haven't done so before. A few people uh, are watching it on Facebook, as I said earlier also. Uh, after a point in time, we will make it only a YouTube exclusive. We will not be doing the session on Facebook. So please, it's a request. It's a, it's a, it, it will show that you really care. Go and subscribe to the YouTube channel and do share it in your network, in your, in your community, in your entrepreneurial network, and show me some love, some love. Now, I'll pick up the questions. So there's a question from Nakul. He says, does translation in a particular business termed as innovation? Can you mention an example? Transition in a business particular. Nakul, I am not able to exactly understand what I'm trying to say. You say that transition in a business model, business. I don't, I don't understand what you mean by transition. I think the business model or the business or, or innovation is basically, uh, uh, it's, it, innovation is a hack. Uh, just to kind of uh, you know uh, give you a very simple a simple insight, innovation is a hack. It is how you are able to, as I said, capture and deliver value for your customer, and how you're able to retain him for the long for the long time. So I think until uh, so ultimately, anything that you do in your business, if you're able to capture a customer, if you're able to give him enough value, and if you're able to retain him for for a long period of time, I think I I personally will count it, it, it as innovation. Okay, Akash. 
what thing should i show to the investor in my business model so akash uh, in your business model so basically the investor needs a business model business model is how you make money how you how what so uh, uh, generally as a part of the entire i i think when you when you say investor i typically go by a standard uh, uh, standard uh, deck framework or pitch deck framework you know talk about the problem the solution the unique value proposition the competition the market size the market research how you make money uh, what is what are the product features what have you done till now and what do you plan to do in terms of milestones and your benchmark uh, and of course the team i think these are the things you need to kind of compile in a deck and show a uh, business model is typically how you how you do your business or how you make money or what is so deceptive about the deceptive about about your business that is uh, a business model or a business uh, scenario okay naman two questions from naman one is since big companies are prone to better innovation how may startup will survive among them naman if you are not replicating exactly what a big company is doing you will of course survive uh, and also if i if i talk from the investor point of view uh, investors or entrepreneur also look at something called as exit at acquisition so if you are doing something which is subsidiary or which is which is parallel to what your competitor or bigger company is doing and if you are really doing it good a bigger company a bigger shark will come and eat the smaller shark or a bigger fish will come and eat the smaller fish so uh, I, and and if 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 they able if they are able to give you a decent and enough valuation i think why not get acquired so or get killed it's it's a, it's a real world scenario so uh, you can do nothing uh, so that you are able to prevent yourself the only way you can save yourself is capture the market as rapidly possible and that means create a, create the most innovative product and raise as much fund as possible and try and capture as much much, much market as possible right and also understand one very important critical factor being the biggest does not guarantee success let me give you two or rather three very important examples and this will show you why if you even if you're, if you're the biggest player in the market your product not might not be the best and this is the reason why uh, players do not get into cross domain listen to this very very carefully guys number 1 microsoft tried getting into the search space by creating bing google still owns 96% of the market share wherein microsoft is the biggest software and technology company on the planet it's almost a trillion dollar company right facebook uh, or, or rather google google tried and get into the social um, uh, social media or social platform uh, game or space right by creating something called google plus it failed miserably a company which is almost at a, tr at a trillion dollar valuation is run by best of the minds on the planet was not able to create another social network because facebook dominated the market right and then of course if you look at facebook facebook has been acquiring companies but they have been failing a lot in their internal projects so internal innovation trying and failing is also a part of each and every company and therefore what you see is only tip of the iceberg or rather one of those innovations that succeeded right so big companies innovate on a daily basis they try and fail they try and fail and, and they learn and that's why i said innovation is not a linear process product development is not a linear process business model is not a linear process B creating a business is not a linear process all of these are cyclic model cyclic processes which you, which you need to understand right so there's no guarantee that a big company creating innovation will survive there's no guarantee that a smaller company will not capture the bigger market look at the example of coda did not innovated enough out of the market now A lot of the, like this. Uh, look at the Xerox machines, almost out of the market. Scanners out of the market. Uh, DVDs, CDs out of the market. Right. So uh, you have to invent and reinvent yourself. Naman, I have one more question from you. Should I afraid that my idea can be stolen by somebody who has better resources to do the business in the market, and so my startup will just collapse? Yes, of course. You should be afraid, but you cannot do anything about it. Simple. It's ultimately the execution that matters, uh, and there's nothing called a idea being stolen. Uh, reels the biggest example guys go and watch my last episode of ema with dnk i spoke about the the future of platform the future of video market and social media platforms tiktok is killed now 
even even if tiktok comes back to the in, to india tiktok will not be able to survive because tiktok will be left as a platform of the poor because all the lifestyle influencers are on instagram and really giving them all, already giving them enough organic reach to get to a wider audience right so there's nothing called as my idea will be stolen go and watch naman my very humble request brother go and watch episode 1 go and watch episode 2 you will learn why literally idea has zero value i have literally written an article on my linkedin i have given a mathematical proof where i have spoken that why idea has got zero value and therefore there's nothing called as my idea will be stolen this is my linkedin profile if you do not follow me on linkedin go and read my articles on linkedin guys all those who are watching and all those who are watching later i have written this article i'm repeating why i'm giving you the, the link of my linkedin profile is because go to my linkedin i put an article called why idea has zero value i have given a mathematical explanation and if you look at that that entire Uh, uh that entire article you will understand that you should not be afraid of any 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 idea or sharing an idea because idea has literally zero value and you cannot it's a open market you cannot stop anybody from uh, uh kind of copying your idea right facebook is doing it blatantly like a like a like a thief and and they find they're successful apple copied from microsoft you cannot rather rather look at the best of them uh jio copied Entire interface of Zoom, Geo Chat, copy an entire interface of WhatsApp. You can't do anything about it. Okay, uh, another another point from Naman. Uh, in the initial stage, how to build a team for startups, Naman? In the initial stage, the team will have to come from your personal network. The team will have to come from uh, your own friends. or people whom you can trust uh, because that is how you find co-founders and that is how you find team the only and most important critical advice i can give you here is that and and as i said i i said this in my last two episodes as well i'll do a separate dedicated episode on co-founders and founders and team creation but most importantly you need to understand that never ever create a team with somebody who is just your friend rather try and create a cross functional team if you and your co-founder does not have Uh, different abilities and different skills it will be a bad team to build a startup so if one is an engineer second guy has to be a sales guy if one of them is a marketer second guy has to be a product guy the team has to be as comprehensive as possible only then you will be able to survive uh, do i have to give share for our company to everyone or is there something else can be done okay so uh, uh, just to add when you start working on any startup or any idea or any business there is technically no company do not register a private limited company on day 1 right because then only you will be able to give, give share rather the great way of starting is think of an idea start implementing it start executing it see if you have certain validation from the customer see, see, see if you have a certain validation from uh, people for, for for whom you're building this entire product and once you're able to do it uh, then think of creating an entity rather a firm or a company and that's a separate conversation altogether but my only advice at this point in time is validate what you're building right now go and take your idea or your prototype to multiple people and and of course uh, then only you'll be able to figure out whether you're, what you're trying to build is good enough or not and then later on uh, once it is in certain shape and form you can get into creating uh, an entity out of it in terms of firm and Uh, uh you know a company right okay i have a few questions that i will pick up from my instagram all those who do not still follow me on instagram please go and follow the link or rather the handle is given in the ticker at the bottom uh and let me get, answer a few more questions akash i'll pick your question in a second let me first uh go and pick the instagram questions okay i have six questions on my instagram uh i will start with one by one okay so there's a question which says can we create a complete ecosystem for startup and investor which also act guide i'm not sure what this question is about i'm not sure what he's asking for or, or let me rather try and post these questions if i can here so that you guys can also read who are watching and we can do it together 
and thank you so much for watching uh, for so long guys i i am really i really appreciate this i'm honored that you guys have been uh, watching this entire episode on live with me and i'm i'm sure it is it is uh, if you if you're watching this on facebook and youtube uh, give me a shout out guys give me give me a, 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 a thumbs up in the in the chat if you really like what i what i'm doing if you like what i am presenting to you if you like the content that i'm making for you guys uh, uh, show me some love give me a shout out uh, post in the comment and and say uh, excited or say uh, thumb, give me a thumbs up uh, meanwhile i i'll i'm, I'm try I'll, I'll try and put these uh questions in chat here no i don't think so i can put these questions here uh, i'll rather read them for you uh, okay so what is the best startup for lifetime what is this question somebody has asked me what is the best startup for life i don't know it's a it's a random question nakul has asked and uh, asked you questions how sustainable development okay it's a very interesting question how sustainable development will transform the industry 4.0 i think sustainable development will be a very critical function from now on now on because most importantly post covid a lot of startups and businesses will go on to cost cutting and wherein a lot of businesses where, where they were where they were working on a credit and a cash rich business model where they were trying to spend lot of money on random activities they start cutting costs and we have already seen it happening we have already seen lay, lay, layoffs being happening we are already seeing salaries reductions being happening we are already seeing employees getting on uh, on uh, getting sent on uh, uh, you know uh, unpaid leaves so therefore uh, somewhat somewhere businesses will have to adopt and incorporate uh, sustainability into their entire business model and they will have to kind of uh, uh, adhere to sustainability as they will collapse like anything so so i say this often that it is it is good to kind of sacrifice in the sh short term and then survive in the long term you you cannot uh, you cannot play um, a startup is a marathon it's not a sprint and you have to have to have to uh, uh, you know take care of multiple areas and juggle multiple hats uh, if you have to survive right and nakul i have another question from you on instagram thank you for asking and what will be the consequences on future startups will the work culture change so work culture is definitely going to be changed work from home is going to stay there because as i said earlier on my instagram in one of my videos if you haven't watched that video on instagram go and watch on my igtv uh, i have already spoken about this that uh, getting an employee to office is a cost to even an employer let us let me let me try and help you decode this guys if you are an if you if i'm let us say paying x amount of salary to one of my employees and he's he's technically utilizing that money or rather he's utilizing 50% of the money that i'm paying him in three places which are total waste one he's spending money on rent so that particular employee might not be from my own city where my office is and he might have come from a different city to come and work for me in that particular city therefore i'm paying for his rent of course i'm paying for his food i'm paying for his travel to come to office every day and last but not the least i'm paying for his tea coffee office expense office ac electricity and things like that now the i don't have a problem in paying this money but imagine this is almost like a 60 50% of his entire salary so if you are able or and, and comfortable hiring employees remotely why not hire somebody remotely who's sitting at their home so therefore the rent money is saved they don't have to travel so the travel money is saved you save on your own office resources so you pay them 50% less amount of money and hire better people so therefore remote working is going to be going to be there and remote working will be adopted as a new normal so startup culture is definitely going to be going to be going to get going to get changed work it it will it will not be work from home it will be it will be like like a, a new normal work from home is going to stay for a long term and and people are going to realize that it was a huge cost in terms of uh, what where they were spending money uh, so these are two questions from nakul i have a few more guys thank you so much for so many questions um okay another question is i don't it's a weird handle i don't know will digital therapeutics be the next big thing in healthcare industry yes anything digital is going to stay 
digital gaming digital entertainment digital services remote digital medical delivery hyper local are going to stay for long run anything into digital will be a long run imagine you you do not want to go to a doctor in covid times you literally do not want you basically want to get diagnosed at your own home and take the medicine prakto is the best example i personally tried prakto pre covid don't be scared pre covid i tried prakto two times and it works like a charm so you simply consult the doctor online he will ask for some terms get t- tell you the medicine you may deliver you 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 uh, order medicine online it gets delivered at your doorstep you don't have to step step out of your home so digital therapeutics is going to be the game changer for any and every scenario so digital medicine is going to be the next big thing any and everything digital if you are getting into a uh, digital space in in 2020 it's a hot sector be there okay last question for the day and then we wrap it's already 1 hour 20 minute thank you for staying and watching the entire episode and last question for the day which is from akash and i'm not sure you're the same akash if i don't oh and i have one more uh, which i will answer so two more sorry guys okay if i don't get user in a city where enough people don't use online services should i get to a bigger city uh no you should not so so technically that means if you are creating a product or a service which is uh digital you mean to say because because you say that uh uh because you say that uh, uh your product is for people who don't use digital services so the question is if i don't you if i don't get user in city where enough people don't use online service so if people are not using online online service that means the customer targeting is is not correct right you're trying to uh, uh feed somebody who's not hungry so you're trying to sell digital services you're trying to cater to or reach out to uh, uh, people who do not use digital service or you don't do not use internet services so therefore you will not thrive so you personally do not need to akash you personally do not need to go to a different city rather you can only target your services or reach out to people in a different city from where you are so now post covid we have realized that people work remotely you can everything can can be done remotely and there is no need for you to kind of change cities in order to kind of target different people so be comfortable be convenient simply uh, uh, change your customer audio uh, change your target customer and you're, you're pretty sorted uh, and of course uh, if if you if you if you are targeting a low ticket size product uh, a bigger city will might have a different uh, lot of different people into the same space it's a, it's a complicated thing to answer so uh, you know uh, based on what you're selling if it's niche you can still go to a bigger city if it's not niche uh it will be tough and if if the space is already crowded uh things will get more difficult for you so yeah i need to then uh, if you're watching this episode akash send me your business model uh i will rather give you my email id to all of you guys or rather rather dm me on instagram that's a better way if you're watching this episode even dm me on instagram i'll be happy to take the take the conversation right i'll be happy to have a look at your business model and help you and support you last question is from akash das i'll pick that and then we'll wrap i'm creating a platform mechanic should i should i own a garage and increase my profit percentage or should i connect multiple garages and earn little profit uh, uh if you own a garage akash it will not be you will not be able to scale so both these models have their own pros and cons if you own a garage you will be able to cater services in a very high quality environment because if you own something you will be able to control the cost and most importantly you will be able to uh just not control the cost but you will also be able to control the quality and output of the delivery that you do so that is one way but then it's a very high capital business so you will not be able to scale it beyond multiple cities because every time you have to start from scratch you will have to uh put in more money you have to start from like like couple of lakhs of rupees just in order to kind of start uh, building that garage ground up but if you connect multiple garages it will it is it is a lean and model but the quality goes out of your control so a sweet spot is that you uh, get into a space where you do tie ups you do a quality control and you create a model where you only have pre selected or few garages in your network and that is how you solve the entire equation i'll be more than happy to kind of have a detailed look i have uh, mentored and seen couple of uh, startups into a similar domain uh, if you are still watching this akash get in touch with me uh, dm me on instagram let's chat about it i'll be more than happy to help you uh, create the entire business model and see how can i help you in validating this entire 
uh, idea uh, this entire thing on uh, on 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 the on grounds up on ground okay so that's it that's a wrap so thank you so much let me let me uh, officially wrap this episode so 11 people still watching it's a one and a half hour episode i'm super glad so thank you so much for watching this entire episode of aim with dnk uh, this is the third episode i have said very soon when the time comes time is right we will make it only and only uh, youtube exclusive so if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel please go and subscribe to my youtube channel if you do not follow me on instagram go and follow me on instagram i am most available there dm me i'll i'll, I'll try and reply to all your questions one more thing if you uh, Uh, you know, do not forget to watch our another show that we're doing called CTC Cracking Code every Thursday, 4 p.m. Uh, uh, we'll we'll reveal the speaker this Monday, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to get in touch with all of you soon, and see you next time. See you next Saturday, 9 p.m. sharp, and hope to have chat and get a lot of questions from you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Have a good night, and see you next time. Thank you.